You need at least three for a meaningful comparison. But this isn't the complete picture. This method specifically addresses how AI model parameters are stored, and just using this method alone consumes around 200 gigabytes. However, as I mentioned earlier, AI can also think and respond in a way that mimics human thought processes, and it works quite effectively. Hello everyone, Error here. The Transformer model has become integral to the era of large language models, driving fierce competition among various LLMs, including those like GPT. I've discussed numerous times why NVIDIA GPUs are indispensable, and why HBM is vital for our projects. Now, an innovative technology has emerged that completely redefines the traditional transformer model. Even if it does not produce a single word, its performance can still be enhanced through internal processes, which I am summarizing quickly now. Let me break it down for you. Typically, NVIDIA's H100 GPUs come with HBM capacities of around 80 gigabytes or 96 gigabytes. However, due to memory constraints, Running large LLMs necessitated the use of multiple GPUs. This meant that large models had to be split into smaller parts and run separately, requiring rapid processing. So, when discussing terms like MVLink, MVSwitch, and InfiniBand, it's clear that these were frequently mentioned. The arrival of this AI model, while not entirely revolutionary, sheds light on why HBM was previously indispensable. This paper delves into why large-scale AI models traditionally require extensive use of HBM on GPUs. It introduces an innovative solution to tackle the significant issue of communication overhead between GPUs. Let's explore this in more detail. Here is the paper, which was submitted on February 7th. Just hearing about it might not make it clear enough. To put it simply, it's like a thought chain process where, before producing words from a prompt, it thoroughly reconsiders potential ideas and then generates the output, repeatedly executing the same actions. If you look at it step by step, you'll see that nowadays, even companies, especially NVIDIA, are deeply engaged in developing content related to large language models. We are discussing the optimization of large language models themselves and how they can be interconnected. For example, understanding why various metrics need to communicate is crucial to grasping why this paper is groundbreaking and why high bandwidth memory was heavily required in the past. Therefore, let's take a moment to thoroughly examine the transformer architecture as detailed by Jay Alama so we can better understand our current state of affairs. By gaining a deeper insight into both the current transformer structure and the chain of thought method, we can more clearly grasp why HBM is so critical and why GPUs that come equipped with HBM are in such high demand. What does this mean? Traditional transformer architectures are built with multiple layers, typically numbering 12 or 24, stacked in a hierarchical manner. Each of these layers executes several operations, including attention mechanisms such as self-attention. As discussed earlier, these attention mechanisms play a vital role in determining the relationships and importance between various words. And each word here, although represented as a word, can be expressed as a number, and their interrelationships are weighted to some extent, all of which are calculated based on attention. But what I want to emphasize is these individual layers. The transformer model, which is composed of 12 distinct layers, requires self-attention operations to be performed at each layer during computation. During these operations, cache values such as keys and values are generated. For example, if you input a specific language into the transformer model and it is set to translate it into English, then when these inputs are processed and passed through each layer, each layer temporarily stores certain information in what we refer to as a cache. However, since this cache is generated for each individual layer, if each key value cache requires approximately one gigabyte, then for 12 layers, it would require around 12 gigabytes in total. But what is the problem here? Everyone, when we look at transformers in AI with chat GPT, each token is generated one by one, right? Actually, there's no strict need to describe interfacing this way, but to convey the concept, it's illustrated like this in the system fit. Now for each individual word, or more accurately, each token, the entire specification up to that point must be included for each generation, which is the essence of the transformer structure. However, to generate just one of these, it means that the preceding cache and information must be present. If each layer requires one gigabyte and there are 12 layers, then 12 gigabytes is needed. As each token is generated, the caches must synchronize within the GPU and between GPUs. This is because we are dealing with an enormous number of parameters, like 200 billion or 400 billion. For large AI models, it is impossible to run them on a single metric. Even with the high cost of NVIDIA GPUs, priced at 40 to 50 million one, they are incapable of handling everything alone. This necessitates the use of multiple GPUs. However, the synchronization and equal calculation of hash information each time result in significant memory usage and substantial data transfer between memory and GPUs. This is an inherent characteristic of the traditional transformer structure. Furthermore, the chain of thought method, which involves systematically linking steps rather than merely listing numbers like 2, 4, 6, enables the process to be articulated more thoroughly. 
This methodical approach allows the model to grasp the context better and provide more accurate responses. The idea is to create longer text, and by doing so, if we apply reasoning, it can lead to further advancements. However, the issue with using this chain of thought method is that the model converts the intermediate processes back into text. Originally, everything was represented in numbers through embedding, but now it's expressed in Korean or English, which significantly increases the length. By increasing the model's length, we observe a slight performance boost. However, this method demands significantly more high bandwidth memory, necessitates increased communication, and requires greater usage of GPS compared to the traditional one-shot approach. The chain of thought method, which involves handling much longer contexts, thereby places a heavier load on high bandwidth memory. In this paper, the researchers from the University of Maryland's AI Center propose a new structural approach. They introduce the P-structure, the prelude structure, the recurrent block structure, and the coda structure, which are more than just three different structures. Instead of generating tokens through multiple layers as traditional transformers do, to start, when you input hello, the prelude phase essentially transforms hello into a numerical format. This is what we call embedding. The sentence you input is then processed through several transformer layers, creating what we refer to as a latent space. This latent space acts as an intermediary numerical space representing both the input and the final output. We can know this, but we don't understand the detailed numbers or vector operations, right? P's role is to convert it into a latent space. This transformation is referred to as prelude. Following that, we have R. Although you see multiple instances of R, it doesn't mean there are many module structures. In reality, there's just one R, which is repeatedly cycled through several times. This process is known as the recurrent block essentially a repetitive block in AI models. You take the same parameters and put the embedded data into E, right? When executing the same computations repeatedly with identical parameters, it is crucial to handle the cache for each layer as needed. During the token generation process, it is important to maintain the cache information accurately at intermediate stages. This practice ensures that subsequent tokens can be generated based on the previously stored data. Instead of creating a new cache each time, it reuses fixed size cache slots to avoid redundant storage. For instance, traditionally, with 12 independent layers, each needing a 1 gigabyte cache, you'd need a total of 12 gigabytes, right? However, it reuses a single 1 gigabyte cache repeatedly, which drastically cuts down the cache size. By only considering a fixed cache slot, the GPU's memory load is reduced, leading to a decrease in HBM size. This also means less communication between GPUs. You might be concerned that this repetition could impact performance, but that's not the case. What's even more intriguing is that, as I mentioned before, the chain of thought method converts certain intermediate steps into text that we can understand. However, when we got excited thinking that large language models have started to think and consider using the chain of thought for escape room puzzles, we should actually reflect on how this process compares to human thinking. When we think, we do use language, but we don't usually write out text first and then think, do we? Instead, our thoughts can often come to us sporadically and in a non-linear fashion. Similarly, this AI does not generate language explicitly by writing text word by word in a chain of thought manner. Rather, this method allows the model to operate within the latent space. Within the latent space, it recurrently and repetitively processes information on its own. You know the recurrent block, R, right? There's no need to translate it into another language. Before it even comes out as world, or before creating this chain, it keeps repeating within the structure called R, continuously updating the cache state. This way, it can think without needing as much cache memory as before. If we have a model with 100 billion parameters, let's take a moment to estimate the amount of memory required to run an AI model. And for this purpose, we'll use FP16, where each parameter is represented by 16 bits. So 2 bytes multiplied by 100 billion, how much is that? It's 200 gigabytes, right? Even with just 100 billion parameters, you would need 200 gigabytes of memory space. Consider an H100 with 80 gigabytes of memory. The A100 also has around 80 gigabytes, so you would need at least three of these to get started, but that's just the beginning. This only covers the storage method for AI model parameters. Using just this, it already requires 200 gigabytes, and that's not all. Activation values and similar calculations are individually mapped. These contribute to the 200 to 400 gigabyte range. Additionally, there are optimizers and gradients using significant memory. Particularly, since it caches all the previously handled information and tokens, the amount of data it retains becomes massive. For example, if the model parameters alone are around 200 gigabytes, the total data footprint typically ranges from 400 gigabytes to 600 gigabytes. This is why AI models generally need two to three times the capacity of LCP. The reason why such high memory demands are mentioned is precisely due to these factors. However, even with these extensive memory requirements, what did they actually say about it? Take for instance a transformer with 18,000 layers. Each layer generates its own cache, 
which explains the significant memory requirement. However, the current model that performs caching within the latent space, as previously noted, this process is repeated over and over again. This means you can minimize it from 48 to just one across each layer. Currently, efforts to reduce memory usage include storing only part of the gradients and reloading as needed. Techniques like FP8 are also discussed to reduce memory consumption, instead of caching each transformer layer. By verbalizing in this manner, we can continuously ruminate internally without needing to generate a chain of thought. So, what was the title again? There is ongoing research suggesting that this could be a highly promising model as it comes with the flexibility to scale the actual computation time required during testing. Of course, since parameters are reused after the initial load, the load of parameter transmission between GPUs remains the same. However, reducing the cache size is still significant. Thus, after processing with the recurrent block, you can complete the final step of language generation. In fact, if you look at figure 1, what does the horizontal axis show? It represents the number of test time compute recurrences. When we repeated the number of test iterations, we found that the model's performance steadily improved. You know, like in the GSM 8K or ARC challenges. This is an eight-part math problem at the elementary school level in the US. I kept repeating it and oh, we noticed that the accuracy improved, although it is still below 50%. This variation can be attributed to the different parameters used. However, the ARC challenge demonstrated that this trend is possible, indicating that this can be achieved without even generating a single word. The ARC challenge evaluates scientific problems and logical reasoning abilities, right? OpenBook is also focused on science facts, and they confirmed all these findings at Damakma. Figure 6 illustrates how the loss decreases with each iteration, showing a significant reduction. Additionally, perplexity, which is a logarithmic measure of confusion, decreases tenfold with each step, highlighting its importance in challenging inference tasks. Even without using a chain of thought strategy, it demonstrates these kinds of results. We always say, think it through and then respond. When AI does the same, it turns out to be effective. Ultimately, this shows that by continuously adding extra computations during the testing phase, the model can deepen its reasoning and enhance its performance significantly. They mentioned that they have achieved performance at the billion level, showing that even small models can achieve great performance. It would be good to keep focusing on this and follow up continuously. Recently, while discussing Chinese smartphones in the context of AI, some people assumed I was Chinese. Just to clarify, I'm not Chinese. I hail from Daehyeon Fordong in Busan metropolitan city. With the recent surge in subscribers to Androgo Engineering, it seems many newcomers have joined. I've been covering both Chinese and American technologies for a long time. With the diverse range of developments happening, a lot of investors are getting involved. However, I'm not suggesting we should cut down on HBM right away. This is an engineering channel where we explore the latest trends in AI. AI technologies are not at a standstill. They are continuously evolving and will keep progressing in the future. Currently, Many companies are purchasing customized ASIC chips instead of those expensive NVIDIA GPUs to find a workaround. And because HBM is being assembled and manufactured at such a high cost, AI model trends are evolving to reduce these expenses. In the midst of this, DeepSeek has adopted an approach using reinforcement learning, which we should understand from a technical perspective. The world changes suddenly. Of course, such things can happen. However, what I want to convey is that technology is constantly evolving. The difference between a year ago and now is substantial. The reason I summarize these papers is not to say that this is the end. Rather, from an engineering perspective, we are continuously approaching it in this way. As these efforts accumulate, another innovation will emerge. I aim to explain these concepts more easily. Since we have subscribers with varying levels of expertise, we provide updates that cater to both beginners and advanced users. So, I kindly ask for your understanding and to refrain from criticizing each other. Additionally, we've launched an international AI engineering channel where we re-upload popular old videos in English. We appreciate your interest and support. On our AI engineering Instagram, we regularly provide a wide range of brief updates, videos, and summarized news. Make sure to stay tuned for all the latest information and updates. This has been Error, signing off for now.